When Roland, your husband, worked with the Manhattan Project? No, Roland, the, the, the Manhattan Project, Roland graduated in 43, and that's, that's when they recruited him to be a, an undercover agent, and so he worked 43 to 46, uh, and so that's before my time. Now, what does that mean he I was, was an undercover agent? What? He was actually, well, it's a very long story. It's really a clandestine story of how they recruited him and, and got him. He was actually in the military. He had uh, signed up while he was still a college student. And um, they uh, took him to Oak Ridge and sent him into one of the buildings when Oak Ridge was still just a mud hole. And um, said they thought there was some sabotage in there to Roland. And uh, what did he think? And he came back and said, no, it's not sabotage. And the guy said, what do you think they're doing there? And Roland said, I think they're separating U-235 from U-238. And the guy said, oh, we can't let you out of the country. <laughs> and so they sent him to Berkeley to work in the laboratory with uh, Oppenheimer and D.O. Lawrence uh, in trying to improve the yield of uh, fissionable material for the bomb. Now, if that sounds familiar to people, it's what... Uh Iran is doing right now that it's upsetting a lot of people, right? They're learning yeah. to separate. Yeah, yeah, probably is. So he knew how to do that that long he, ago. He was, yeah, he just, he, if you asked him, he would say it was dumb luck. They didn't have anything to do the night before and he went to the library and so he was reading up on nuclear fission. <laughs> and said, how did you know? And, they, and he said, oh, there's nothing coming in, nothing going out, there's some gauges. And I talked to the operator and she said, what are you doing? She said, I'm keeping the ratio at 14 to one. I think it's 14 to one, you can check up on me. And uh, so then he immediately knew what it was that they were doing. Now, I wouldn't have known, I'd been a dummy probably. Ro Roland didn't really work at Oak Ridge. He, he just went to Oak Ridge and uh, when it was still just a mud flat, they were just, uh, um, that was really a, a sort of a sort of a test. They had already essentially recruited him. That, that's quite a story. They put him on a train, and then the train went on a siding at night. And somebody tapped on the screen and uh, the curtain and said, "Come on, get up!" And and it was Lieutenant Colonel, and he was a private. He should have <laughs> he should have tumbled to that right then that he was he was somebody special. I have about an hour of tape of Roland. Remember when I... It's an hour and 40 minutes. Roland was an exceptionally good agent. Um, and he taught me some, some of his, his tricks because he, you know, he went to school to, to learn to be an agent, how to, how to pick locks. He had his own little lock picking kit, which is illegal. He had a car with untraceable license plates, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And... Uh, Who trained him? The CIA? Um, somebody in the army somewhere once they once they fingered him I call it fingered him I asked him how he got fingered and he was at Ohio State University for some kind of a, a course or something and there was a professor there uh, who asked him if he wanted to work with him in the summertime because something the, the course had gotten out of, out of whack in terms of timing and Roland thought gee that was more fun than just hanging around doing calisthenics and so he worked in with this guy in the lab who was uh, working on nuclear energy, and we suspect, I suspect at least, that that's the guy, that professor is the one that fingered Roland to be picked up to be uh, used. But um, in more recent years, his CO back in, there was a, actually an office in Oakland nearby that was undercover office. It was a magazine subscription place. If somebody came in to get a magazine, they took the subscription, mailed it in. But there were guys in the back who were monitoring phone taps, a guy who could crack safes, a guy who was an FBI man who tailed people. Uh, E.O. Lawrence's chauffeur was uh, FBI, a former FBI agent, that sort of thing was, was going on. Now, when he was uh, undercover in the and, Manhattan Project, did he ever uh, come up with any uh, spies or any... Uh, oh, yeah. 
you know, uh, in later years we had some reunions, and that, that was what I was going to say about the guy when I, after I had written Roland's obituary and he read it, he said, I didn't know all these things about Roland, and I said, that's why he was such a good agent, and his cover was never blown, because Roland just didn't talk. And uh, so he was really quite impressed with the things that Roland had done and that he didn't even know about, and that's because that's what made Roland a good, uh, a very, very good agent. And no, he had to do things like uh, this. You know, there were there were some cases where were scary for him too, for fear somebody'd shoot him. You know, uh, because he had to do burglar kind of stuff. <laughs> and mainly, he went. To, he had a, a card. He went to communist meetings. Really? Uh, yeah. They, they matter of fact, uh, the Russians had exact duplicate of our plans of the bomb. And if they'd gotten it built first, you know, they'd used it on us, don't you? And uh, so he, he went to these things and um, uh, was not very impressed with the, uh, with the morals of the Oppenheimers and what <laughs> out of this world because he'd go to, go to their parties and he said, all they thought about was sex, sex, sex. So I guess they were a wild bunch. But all of this undercover work was in this country, right? Yeah, this is in Berkeley at the university. He was working as a physicist. His, I've got his uh, papers. I, I applied for them and got them, and he's listed as an employee of the university as a physicist working uh, with E. O. Lawrence. But he was really an undercover agent for the Army. Yeah, he was in the Army in civilian clothes. Matter of fact, when he was in uh, Oak Ridge, they already had fingered him by then. They told him to send his uh, uniform home and and uh, have his mother send him civilian clothes, which they did, and the mailman thought he had died in the war because um, his army uniform came back. Their mailman thought he was killed. Hmm. And they never knew that, that, that he wasn't killed. The mailman never knew that. He just assumed he was killed. And so.